everybody <laughs> to the select board meeting town of rochester july 25th 2022 it is now 6 15. we're calling the meeting to order this meeting has been warned in three places correct yes and on our website and notification has been emailed to all interested parties so i believe we have a, a legal legal meeting going on and mm -hmm. The next thing that we're going to do is look at prior meeting minutes. And we have, we go back to July 5th, where we had a select board meeting minutes. This was a special meeting. And it was uh, in consideration of uh, the tax anticipation note for Mascoma Bank. Um, I have read all of the minutes. I move that uh, I move that we accept the minutes. I second the movement. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We move on to our next meeting. We've been busy. July 7th, 2022. We had an emergency select board meeting to this. This one was to approve the um, the tax rate. Um, it was discussed, we discussed abating delinquent taxes for $5 and under, eliminating small credits $2 and under, and we voted to waive the late filing penalty for HS 122 forms. Um, I found nothing exceptional or mistaken about it, so I move that we accept these minutes. I second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Moving along to July 11th, this was a regular select board meeting um, called to order driveway permit, White River Alliance, park use application, a discussion about porta potties and library updates, as well as a message from uh, the energy coordinator. Uh, I have read and found no mistakes in the select board meetings. I move that we accept these meetings, minutes. I second that. All in favor? Right. Aye. Okay, that takes care of past business. There's one. There is one more noted on the agenda that we do not have those minutes uh, in front of us yet. They're still being compiled. So on the agenda, it says special select board meeting July 13th. That was the one that was down at the high school. Um, we are still compiling those minutes and we will probably approve them at our next meeting. So we will move that one forward. Under new business, stray animal holding contract from Homeward Bound. This is an annual contract that um, we contract with Homeward Bound to uh, house animals that are strange strays for whatever reason not with their owners um we do have an animal control officer who would work in conjunction with homer bound so i move that we continue to have that relationship i just wanted to say that um in the past three years we have not used their um services services and um, it was brought to my attention that it's 450 50 for the applicant or for the for the option one and it's for option two it's six hundred dollars and no charge for stray dogs or no limit as to the number of stray dogs the town may bring to homeward bound I think we should table so, this and look at this at another meeting uh, the, the, the fee to can, take a stray over is an additional on top of the 450 75, 75 mm -hmm. so that, that's for the fee for the dog to stay for the first three days or first three dogs i mean excuse me do we have any input from jeff brown I, i'd like to i wasn't here when all of this mm -hmm. happened and Kristen um is not here this evening to talk about it so i, I would rather well we'll table this until our next meeting and Maybe we can get Jeff's opinion as well. No action taken. Again, under new business, uh, we are going to open bids for an underground tank removal here at this town office building. This was uh, put out to bids and 
I am going to sit back and recuse myself while Frank opens the bids. We will not make a decision tonight because I'm recusing myself. This will also get tabled until we have three select board members. We have a quorum anyway. <laughs> so we received three bids. Um, the first one was from Harvey's Plumbing and Electric and Excavating LLC. And that was for $1,501. We received a bid from Excavate <clears throat> for the sum of $1,315. And we received a bid from Precision Welding and Maintenance for $1,525. Oh, yeah. So they're all in the ballpark. Um, we'll have to look them over and then make a decision. Excuse me, It'll Frank. Be, the, the, the last one, 1500 and what? Excuse me, I'm sorry. 25, 1525. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. Thank you. That's quite all right. So we'll, we'll have to do this when we've got at least two of us here to make a decision. Okay, under any new business, Mason, is there something that you'd like to discuss? Uh, I was here uh, to hear the letter being read. Uh, it's coming. Which is new business? Uh, how are you? Um, Let's go through them. Let's go through all the yeah. departments and then put it in the public comment section and go from there because it's we received it that way kind of. And there really wasn't any, we don't have any. It's coming. Else. So it's, it'll be a that, right. I think we'll get through that the was business. Basically, why I was here because I had actually spoken with Alice and this is the letter. Yeah. Okay. Why. Yeah. Um, do we have Joan with us? Oops, sorry. Um, Joan is here. Yes. Joe, you're muted. You weren't muted, are you? <laughs> we heard from Martha, so you know, we know the owl is working. Due to technical difficulties. <laughs> Might be one. <laughs> I saw her face earlier in the in the boxes across the top, but now I, oh, it just says her name. That's Martha. Oops, sorry. Hmm. Are you looking for me? Yes, hi. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. The volume is really low on my computer for some reason, and I can't turn it up. So I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were you were looking for me. Well, I we can here. hear you loud and clear. So okay. Do you have any information for us this week? Um, I don't. Okay. Uh, the last just, thing I was doing was working um, with Frank on uh, the sidewalk, and the contract has the fully signed contract has been sent to Weaver. So. Um, we're good to go on that. And uh, then I manage the, the, the tank removal bid process as well. So just basically odds and ends that I've been working on lately. To add to Joan's report, um, we have uh, Joan's given us a, a last day date. And it is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Joan, but I think it's August 26th. Is that correct? I think that's right. It's the last Friday of August. Last, last Friday of August. Yep. So we're uh, have we're going to be posting an administrative assistant position, and we're going to advertise it in a few papers, and plus put it on our web website. Hopefully, we get some interest soon and shortly. So we'll be we'll be putting that out right off. And there's a little bit of time Hello. left to beg. And yeah. Hello. Hi, Frank. Hey, Patty. Hey, it's Robert. Hi. I, I want to make certain that uh, 
new discussions or other discussions, I will be included with a concern. Okay, yes. I, we, During the public. That's on our agenda. During the public comments. Thank you. Oh, not under discussion. Whoa, 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 excuse me, Frank. They're in public comments and not under the discussion? It's just under public comments. We're going to save it till the end so we can get through our meeting. That's all we're trying to. Well, this will be a very important part of your meeting. Well, it's coming on the end, Robert. So hold your horses. <laughs> I don't own horses. <laughs> Thank well, you. Just hold them anyway. Um, <laughs> Joan, are you still there? Yes, I am. Hi. So um, sorry to see you move on. I hope you're moving on to a happy place. And if you decide that you don't want to move on, there's still a chance to say you can stay. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> the door is still open. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to miss you anyway. Good to know. Appreciate yeah. your efforts. All right. Let's move on to see. Do we have anyone from the library on Zoom? No. We do not. And we do, we, do. we do not have anyone here. No library discussion. We should ask uh, who who is calling from 767-4998. That that is Robert Franks. Okay, thank you. Okay. So he's in there twice for some reason. Okay. Um, so we have no report from the library this evening. Um, so we're going to move on to the highway department, which we do not have any report from the highway. They are continuing to do roadside mowing yep. and um, the, the typical summer maintenance, road grading, and this and that. So we, uh, we wish them safe travels as they travel up and down the sides of our road. Uh, utilities operator, Terry, what have you? Everything's good. Everything's good. That's good to hear. We like that. Um, both water and sewer? Yeah. All right. Hey, Patty, it's Robert. Yes, sir. Hey, I just wanted to, I met with some of the town uh, road crew the other day and complimented them on the great work they've done on Brook Street. And uh, they're doing a fabulous job. The guy that did all the uh, brush hogging, another fabulous job. So I thought that's important to share for those guys because they work hard. Well, they do appreciate hearing compliments because they don't just don't get enough of that. Thank you. Let's move on to Jeff Gephardt. Are you out there, Jeff? Jeff is our energy coordinator. Yes, I'm out yes. here. Um, I am, uh, I hope to have it you today, but it will be later this week. Um, I'm working on an analysis and cost and performance uh, for um, insulating the garage, um, town garage wall between the conditioned and unconditioned space. Um, looking at that from the standpoint of what minimum code requires, um, and also um, from the standpoint of building physics and moisture movement across the wall. Whatever we do, we want to do it upright and we want to do it to last. So uh, working on uh, pricing estimates, you know, obviously you'll have to put it out to bid, but uh, to get a sense as to how we want to scope out the work, we really have to go through the various materials and their prices and coverages to, and as well as performance to uh, put in front of you uh, a reasonable group of choices. Do you anticipate this to be a project that could take place this year? Can can it be done uh, during the fall winter season? Um, I would that it could. Um, I think we all know that the number of contractors that we have remaining and the workloads in front of them uh, make saying when something can happen, um, especially small things sometimes difficult. Well, let's see where that leads us. Hopefully we can get it done sooner than later. Perfect. Anything else? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, thank you so much.
Okay, we're going to move into old business. We have, um, again, we're going to move the treasurer's report and the master financial policy one more meeting down the road. Um, again, we'd like to have all three of us present um, for the discussion on both these items. So if, uh, if we can move this into the month of August, we promise, I think we promise we can get that done. Right. So we're just not trying to kick the can too far down the road, but we do want to have input from all three of us. And it is getting time to get these things done. Okay, so have we gotten to the point of the letter? Yep, I can say so. Anybody else yep. have anything else to add? I have a letter that was forwarded to us with a request to be read at tonight's meeting. Um, it does come from Senator Allison Clarkson. It is dated April 6th. 2022, and it actually has a title to it. So bear with me as I read all of this. The title is How Rochester Was Moved from Windsor District to Addison District. And I hope everyone can hear me well. The decision to move Rochester from the Windsor District was the last piece in the Senate's complicated redistricting puzzle. It made me very sad. I had fought to keep Rochester in Windsor District during the entire process and was profoundly disappointed when the chair of the Legislative Reapportionment Board raised the constitutional issue which swayed the Senate Reapportionment Committee to move Rochester into the Addison District and Braintree into the Washington District. <clears throat> First, let me <clears throat> fill you in on a bit of what led up to this decision by the SRAC, Senate Reapportionment Committee. Every 10 years, the results of the national census requires each state to review the impact of any population change on their electoral districts. Our Vermont constitution requires that our state's population must be fairly distributed to afford equality of representation. COVID delayed the national census returns, and as a result, the redistricting process has been condensed. Each state manages its own work. Vermont's process begins with the legislation, Legislative Apportionment Committee, the LAB. It is a non-legislative group with a chair appointed by the Supreme Court Chief Justice and a committee of seven which is politically balanced. It is charged with taking the first stab at this work. The LAB met this summer and fall and it produced two reports, a majority and minority report for both the House and the Senate to consider. In the House, the Government Operations Committee, after feedback from the boards of civil authority reviews the LAB proposals and after much work, proposes a new redistricting map to the House for approval. In the Senate, the LAB report comes straight to the Senate Reapportionment Committee, a group of seven balanced by party and region. You can find all the LAB reports and maps on the legislative website. Here's the link to our SRAC website. Maps are under the reports and resources tab https colon that forward slash forward slash legislature.vermont.gov forward slash committee forward slash detail forward slash 2022 forward slash 371. The Senate Reapportionment Committee on which I served was entrusted with the tax task of incorporating the 2020 census data into our Senate districts so that they equi equably reflect the changes in op population. While the population in Vermont grew from 625,741 in 2010 to 643,077 in 2020, 
Most of that growth was in the northwest of the state in Chittenden, Franklin, and Grand Isle counties. The increase in Vermont's population requires that each House member represent about 4,300 and each Senator about 21,500. The Southern four counties, Bennington, Rutland, Wyndham, and Windsor lost population, but the most significant loss has been in the Northeast Kingdom. With the support of our constitution and historic precedent, the SRAC decided to adhere to the following standards. We agree that Senate districts be based on one, county boundaries, two, substantial equality, minimal percentage deviations, three, the avoidance of splitting towns and counties, four, respecting community connections, common interests, and geography, and five, creating a reasonably shaped district, compact and contiguous territories. And we set a deviation total of no more than 15%. Anything much higher courts a constitutional challenge. Our challenge was several fold. All of the Southern counties lost population, not as much as the Northeast Kingdom, but some. And when you start to move towns into other counties slash districts, it has impact on many other districts. Addison County had lost population and needed more. Orange County had gained too much population for one person and needed fewer towns. The Bennington district needed population. They got Londonderry and Rutland needed population. They got Mount Holly. Windsor district got Pittsfield and Thetford to help our population loss. SRAC had decided to move Braintree into the Addison district to help increase their population, but there is no road from Addison to Braintree, which, let, which the LAB chair felt could be cause for a constitutional challenge, which is why at the very last minute, Rochester was moved into the Addison district and Braintree went to the Washington district. This decision was very frustrating. I had argued long and hard to keep counties at a, as a whole as possible. So this decision was really tough. I am sorry it ended up this way. We need to do all we can to grow Windsor County's population for the 2030 census by about 7,000 people to be kept as a whole as a county and to be equitably represented by three senators. If you have further questions, please be in touch. I can be reached by email, aclarkson at leg.state.vt.us or by phone at 802-457-4627. That is can the I statement comment that on that letter, Austin. Patty? Uh, that is the statement that was sent from Allison Clarkson, and now we would take any comments or questions. Okay, so today I sent an uh, email to you and Julie with the uh, verbiage that Allison Clarkson shared with me as of this morning. Unfortunately, everything you just were very patiently and read very clearly. Um, did you do you know where that letter was submitted to? Uh, back in April. Yes. Mm, I do not. I do not believe I know that. Well, it's in the email that I sent you this morning, and yes. Allison Allison sent that letter to the Democratic Party of Rochester. Obviously, she did not share it with the town clerk. Julie was caught blindsided as of 10 days, two weeks ago. Sadly, Julie wasn't even aware of what happened. Uh, Kevin Doherty, he admitted to me by telephone that he was blindsided and wasn't warranted. Now, Kevin's the chair of the Board of Civil Authority. Allison Clarkson did not share this with the town. Or it's obvious she didn't share it with the town of Rochester because we, the townspeople wouldn't be confused 
and Julie would be able to project what Allison shared. So this is a democratic... Uh, I, let me just make it real clear. This is a dereliction of duty from the senators, uh, the, the former senators, uh, McCormick and Clarkson. The first thing they should have done is send a registered letter to the towns, to the Board of Civil Authority of Pittsfield and Rochester, to make certain that they received the letter that you just read, and so that the select board, the Board of Civil Authority of Rochester, could communicate in a correct and positive, democratic way to the people that are asking questions. So the, all, all, it, I think it's great Alice, Allison Clarkson put this letter together, but guess what? She didn't communicate it on a bipartisan program so that everyone was of the... We're, but let me just make this clear. We just talked about roads. We talked about painting a basement. This is a serious 30 to 20 to 40 year political hydraulic event. And it is important. There's one thing that I'm concerned about as, a, as a, an American citizen is the concern and the respect for votes. This is a serious issue. And I'm asking Martha Slater to quote me in this coming Thursday's paper as the senators of the former senators of Rochester are in dereliction of duty for not making this clear. And I feel badly for Julie. June said, well, Robert, I haven't seen the ballot yet. Well, why, why was that letter not shared with the entire bipartisan, Democrat, communist, Republican, independent. I mean, why wasn't the town clerk of uh, and Dune, the chair of the select board, and Kevin Doherty privy to that letter? I mean, this, this, listen, I, I warned the town of Rochester over a year and a half ago, Julie attested to it, that the 220 census will affect Rochester and what's going to happen. And, you know, I thought at the beginning when I realized this information, had, this situation had occurred, I thought, wow, that's the best thing that could ever happen to Rochester. They're included in Addison County. And then I find out that the town of Rochester doesn't even know it happened. I mean, I mean, I, this is despicable. And, you know, the other thing is this has to go in the minutes be put into the vault for historical research so people know that as of this election cycle right now. Oh, by the way, I don't know whether anyone has a calendar in front of you, but the primary elections are 22 days away. And we're in this scenario. The people of your town don't know what is happening. So I don't know who's in charge of the uh, election day. The Board of Civil Authority and how you're going to have so many people saying, wait a second, I'm voting for a senator from Addison County. Ruth Hardy is totally delinquent. I, I met with her personally. She actually wrote a note specifically to meet with the town clerk of Rochester. That was over a week ago. I don't believe that meeting ever happened. So our new senator is Held, should be held with dereliction of duty. So I wouldn't vote for her. I mean, you've got it. She's out canvassing for uh, uh, announcing she's the new senator, while the town clerk of Rochester doesn't even know that the, the, the senators have been removed. So, uh, you know, Allison Clarkson and Dick McCormick do the woe thing. I'm so sorry, Dick McCormick, saying I I, I love Rochester. I love the voters. Well, it's like a relationship. Dick's been the senator for this town for 30-some-odd years. If he l really loved it, he would have had a phone call or a letter or said, hey, guys, everyone get together and let's talk about the, the hydraulic dynamics, which includes education, funding, uh, school resor resourcing. Hello, that's a big question. It, 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 it involves Robert? banking. Robert? 
Can you stick to the topic here? Let's not drag this out. The what's been well, done well, has well, been well. done. There's it, no hey, Robert. This is our meeting, not yours, and we're giving you a chance to speak. No, no, Frank. Terms. Frank, you're wrong. We're done. He's had his five minutes too. Well, if, had, I hope that's recorded. You've had your five minutes, and that's good. You didn't alert me that I was being timed. Okay, you're not. Um, the we met with Ruth at our seven thirteen meeting. Um, so all three of the select board and the town clerk met Ruth Hardy just a couple weeks ago. Um, Julie was on a vacation, so if that meeting uh, was slated to have taken place uh, in the past week, um, it, it, it would have been moved forward. So I, I think that uh, all of that is still pending and um, we're, we're not passing any judgment on anyone uh, prior or in the future. We just hope to get good representation wherever we end up. Well, I, that, yes. that, that, that's not very democratic. This is a serious issue that people need to know about. Okay, excuse us, Mason's raising his hand. Thank you. Uh, I became aware of the situation uh, in, in the process of filing with the state of Vermont as an independent candidate for Addison County. And in this process, uh, discovering that the communications hadn't happened very well in town. And what, you know, what are the rules here? Is it, would it be expected that within 24 hours after a committee has done this, that a town is notified what what parameters because we have a situation where they made this decision in april so that's the question i have for the select board is what are your expectations for being notified in a pretty serious situation here uh, related to voting etc uh i think tonight is pretty clear that uh, we are still within the Windsor County judicial system, that this is only affecting the voting situation of the Senate, but the Senate and the House, uh, you know, what are the effects is, I think, need to be expressed to the voters. But thank you very much, and I hope to represent uh, uh, Rochester in a run in Addison <laughs> County. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone else have any comments on this letter or the subject? Sadly, there's some leaders of town that um, aren't present tonight. They're just voters. Okay. Well, thank you. I guess we will close the discussion on that. Anything yep. further? Nope, I'm set with that. Good to go. It is so noted into our meeting. And at this point in time, I believe we have taken care of our business. I move we adjourn the meeting. I second the motion. All in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you so much, everyone.